Alright, uh, how you going guys? It's Jessima here. Uh, we're going to be doing the hover, takeoff, and takeoff roll tutorial today. Uh, so we're going to also do some hover taxiing as well. So first off, we're going to take a look at some really easy symbology on the top left hand corner here that I have set up. Uh, you can also get it from pressing control, enter, and it goes, comes up. So this is the aircraft in a stable state. I've just started the aircraft up. I'm just going to center my truck right and you can see I haven't touched any of the controls, so that's where the, all the aircraft controls are going to sit. We're also going to be using the uh, IHAD uh, symbology, as you can see here. Uh, so we're starting the aircraft up now, so I'll put our um, APU off and APU's Alright, so what we're going to be using is the middle part of the IHADs has like a little symbology there that looks like a little helicopter from the top down view. So I'll be using this which is the in like a pretty much the hover mode version. But there also should be a dot in the center of the eye hands that will show our velocity vector of which way the aircraft is moving. So also using the controls on the top left we can pretty much get the aircraft into a hover. What we'll do well ever so slightly. Let's see if the map's come up. The map hasn't yet. Oh, we're not going to worry about the map because we're not actually going anywhere. So we'll get uh, the flight page up. So we're going to increase the throttle just a little bit to get us in the ground effect. And the aircraft's going to want a little bit of left rudder or the, uh, what do you call it? Torque pedals. Making sure your park brake is on as well. For the hovering. There's the left rudder. Okay, so we've got the left, the left fork in there, and bringing it up probably about three or four feet. And there it is. All right, so we're in ground effect. Okay, so just ever so slightly moving the controls around, trying to keep. Roughly in the same spot. So you can see the velocity circle moving. If you can keep that roughly over the uh, the plus sign there, or the, the rotors, you won't move. But that is pretty much self-explanatory, all I can say. I'm using about 61%, as you can see in the top left of the eye hands there. To so stay up on the ground. I'm probably about, what, going, I'm about four feet up off the ground. Going around about one knot, zero knots. So if you can keep it on zero knots, that's good. And then once you're comfortable, we'll go left. Trying to keep the aircraft from going forwards and backwards. We'll bring the aircraft left. And then we'll stop it. Bring it right. And stop it. Also, if you wanted to, you could just go full left rudder, or a little bit of left, not left rudder, I would say, more torque, um, what is it, torque rotor, torque thrust, and we can spin around on our axis. Alright, you want to stop that, just duck in the right rudder for a bit, and then back to the left rudder. Alrighty. So that's pretty much how you want to want to do it. Now, watching the little carrot in the middle is really, really easy. So what we'll do is we'll put it down in the middle, on the ground. And there we are. So using that little velocity vector in the center of the IHADs is really good. So let's turn the IHADs off. We've still got the symbology at the top left, so you can see what my controls are doing. But I'm gonna use these buildings at the front and using some of the lines in here to monitor how I'm hovering. Okay. A little high. So you can see when we hit the ground effect, it kind of pushes us back up in the air. So you want to be nice and nice and slow. Nice slight movements, otherwise you're going to be all over the place. And there it is. So I'm using the front of the cab out of my peripheral visions 
to look at the lines and try and keep the helicopter inside the uh, the concrete slab zone. So that's all I'm trying to do. Now I haven't. Oh, I just hit the ground there. I think with the wheels bounce. Bring it up a bit more. And uh, as Matt Wag said, I think in his video, uh, the higher you go, the more power you need to stay in a hover because you'll be outside ground effect. And there it is. Alright. So I'll just put it back on the ground. That's pretty much the hover uh, from what I say. Don't use any trim that I have uh, done a few tests. Unless you really want to um, get it nice and stable, you can use trim. You shouldn't have to use trim. It's a very stable aircraft, nonetheless. But there's a lot of movement in the joysticks and stuff. Alright. Now to taxi the aircraft. We'll turn our iron hats back on. And we'll take the parking brake off. And you're going to want to have the tail wheel lock button. Uh, when it's blacked out like that, it's off. When it's on, it's like that. Okay? But we want it, we want it blacked out. Ooh. I'll move it. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to start moving forward. So we'll tip the aircraft forward, or the rotors, the cyclic forward, get the rotors down, and we'll bring it up to about 23. And now it's starting to move. Okay. We'll follow the the white the yellow line around to the right. So we're going to have to unlock the tail wheel and nice and slight movements. As you can see, it's that's all you need. Once you get going, you get going. If you go too fast, you will end up like the warbirds and uh, doing donuts. Uh, so it's just like any other tail dragger, nice and slow. But you got a little bit more control over the tail wheel than the tail draggers. And if you just want to stop, you bring the rotors back to center, and I'll stop for you. Okay. So we'll go and follow the taxi line a little bit longer. And then we will do a hover taxi out to the runway, where we will do a hover, um, hover to takeoff, or a runway takeoff. So just follow this line and this way. Don't take any note of that waypoint um, symbology there. In fact, we can take eye hats off to this. All we're doing is following the taxi line. Alright, now once you're straight and you have a good uh, location that you want to go, turn the wheel off. You can turn whilst the wheel is locked if you want it will uh, flash at you but any slight movements don't do it too much otherwise you can break the, the tail wheel I don't know if it's um, I, I know in the real aircraft not this real aircraft but in real aircraft see, uh, if there's tail wheel lock and you slam it into right or left when the tail wheel locks on you can snap it off so I wouldn't say that the uh, this aircraft exactly is the same. But that's pretty much how you taxi. Just a little bit, uh, so we'll bring the symbology on. You can see like 19% up the top left hand corner there. And again, if you want to stop, center the uh, center of the stuff. All right, so we'll use the hover technique, out, uh, hover taxi technique out of the runway now. So the same thing with the hover technique. We want to bring up the aircraft ever so slightly, so we'll take off with the parking brake on. So we get that aircraft up in the air, and then slightly tip the nose forward, and we follow the line out. So no more than probably 10 knots. If it starts getting away from you, just pull back on the stick. Now I'm not a helicopter pilot by here by much, uh, but I do love the the uh, DCS World helicopters. They are absolutely amazing. I gotta say, I'm only a student pilot and uh, fixed wing at the most. Uh, but helicopters are a hobby in simulators. 
Um, I try my best. So I'm not going to go any faster than 15. Probably no faster than 10, really. If you can get it there. And you just want to follow either a line or a crack in the, the concrete. Uh, and that's pretty much of a taxi. So we're about three feet off the ground. And we'll take this taxiway to the left. Follow the line around to the left here. So all you want to do is keep the rotors, or keep the, the aircraft as flat as possible, or as stable as possible, and just use your uh, rudder pedals, or in this case I think it's called the torque rotor, to turn the aircraft on its axis and bring it to the runway. Now, what I've seen when I used to work uh, at the Army Base in Oki, when they come out of the runway, they don't actually land back on the runway, they stay in a hover mode. Um, and that's if they're going for hover to takeoff. Uh, so we'll do hover to takeoff. But honestly, hover to takeoff is pretty self-explanatory. Alright, so we're out on the runway now. So basically, once you're in a hover, you just increase... Once we come to a full stop, you'd uh, get the, the go-ahead for takeoff or whatever. And then you'd just increase, keeping the uh, vector line down the center of the runway. And keep staying on the runway as long as possible. And then uh, once you're at whatever feet it is uh, at the airfield, the helicopter is probably only at 200 feet, then you can uh, go off into your uh, di direction of your mission. So, so that's a hover to um, a hover to take off uh, that I have my understanding on. Now to do the landing takeoff, which we will do a cut. That's a weed cut there, but now we're back on the ground and we're going to do a rolling takeoff. Now to do a rolling takeoff, we just get a little bit, obviously you got to take the parking brake off. Wheel is locked straight forward on the collective, bringing up the speed just a bit, maintaining the center line. Once we're around about 30 knots, increasing a little bit more. Pulling back on the stick. Pulling back on the stick. And around about 40, you want to come up. 
Now you would do a rolling takeoff if you're really heavy. Uh, so like if you had missiles or fuel tanks or anything of the sort on the aircraft, um, that would make you super heavy for uh, a non-conventional um, helicopter takeoff. So uh, I hope that kind of helps. That's how I have looked at the um, tutorial myself and uh, how I find it easy for me to take off. I really hope that helps and I hope to see you guys in the future on the next video. Thank you very much guys. I'll see you later.